Namaste, everyone. My name is Nikunj Trivedi. I am the president of the Coalition of Hindus of North America. And I wanted to welcome everybody for this wonderful discussion um, of a very important topic that's been going on. Uh, many, many of you are aware of this, uh, but we thought this is a good opportunity for us to have a conversation about what's really happening with this uh, New York law uh, that is being considered. And I will share a quick update in a bit. Uh, the, the bill as it stands was looking to uh, deem swastika as a symbol of hate to be taught exclusively as a symbol of hate in uh, New York schools. And uh, so today we're going to talk about some of the concerns around that, uh, what students may feel about it, what is some of the history behind um, you know, how the swastika has been portrayed, what is the symbolism behind swastika, so on and so forth. But before I begin, I wanted to share with everybody some good news. Uh, thanks to the community's efforts and a lot of you uh, sending emails, signing the petitions, and raising your concerns, this bill has been stalled. So I repeat, the bill has been stalled, and it's a small victory, but uh, an important one, because it shows that uh, when we raise our concerns in the right way, uh, people do listen. And uh, I also want to acknowledge our Jewish friends uh, who have supported us in this initiative, given that it is a very sensitive topic. Uh, as we know, as Hindus, we do not oppose the intention of this bill, because the intention is great. It wants to talk about uh, hate and uh, educate people about hatred and racism and so on and so forth. And as Hindus, we are totally for that. Our concern really was uh, in talking about hatred, in talking about the swastika, uh, the real meaning behind the swastika gets lost. And if this bill had passed, it would have major impact on Hindus, Buddhists, Jains, Native Americans, and other religious and cultural communities that considered sacred uh, swastika as sacred and holy. Uh, so with that, I wanted to come back to our panel. Uh, today we have a bunch of folks who are uh, of different ages and different experiences. Uh, I'm going to start off with the ladies first. Uh, so Arushi Ramaka, uh, she's the president of the Hindu Students Council at Montgomery High School in New Jersey. Uh, then we have Sukran Chandrasekhar. He's from the HSC, the Hindu Students Council chapter in Plano East High School. And then we have uh, Sri Gokul Kunnatji, who's the president of the U.S. Hindu Alliance, as well as uh, Suresh Krishnamurti ji, uh, who's on the Kona Board of, uh, board of uh, Trustees. Uh, so welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, let's have some good discussion around this topic. Uh, so maybe, uh, Gokul Bhai, I want to start with you. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about kind of what is the history behind what has happened with the swastika? You know, what, is, what has been the kind of the cultural past? The, of course, everyone knows the Nazi uh, story, but I wanted to hear from you if you can talk about that a bit. Namaste. Uh, thank you for um, uh, asking me to join this uh, important discussion. Um, swastika, as we all know, is a very, very ancient symbol, probably even predating Om, um, uh, some would argue. Uh, it is uh, uh, used in cultures, countries uh, across the globe uh, for millennia. It has been a symbol of good fortune, auspiciousness, uh, harmony, uh, dharma. Uh, it, it symbolizes a lot of things uh, that are uh, our ideals. Uh, so <clears throat> to cast a negative meaning uh, to misappropriate such a symbol uh, for very evil purpose uh, is something that none of its users would want. So uh, we, we need to make sure that the world recognize the true meaning, uh, the true uh, message, uh, and the historical usage of this particular symbol, uh, which is uh, uh, sacred to Hindus, Buddhists, Jains, uh, people in Japan, China, uh, all across the globe. And uh, I do want to make this comment that many people think that this is a Asian symbol. Uh, this is far from the truth. Uh, neither Hindu uh, dharma nor Buddhism, uh, nor Jainism, uh, nor Shinto, uh, nor any of the other traditions, 
are restricted to uh, certain countries anymore. We are all global. Definitely Hindus are in more than uh, 100 countries. Uh, so are the Buddhists. So you cannot ban a symbol that is central to so many cultures, so many traditions, uh, and say, well, this is uh, to stop hatred. Uh, in, in this context, I just wanted to uh, alert the viewers that yesterday Twitter had blocked the accounts of several thousand people who had the Jewish symbol, the Star of David. Twitter's explanation was that many people are using it to promote anti-Semitic messages on Twitter. Uh, according to the Anti-Defamation League, they say that last year alone in Britain, for instance, there were 4.2 million Twitter messages that are anti-Semitic. So uh, given the scope of hatred that is out there in the world, especially in social media, uh, I would uh, understand the motivation behind passing legislation to stop hatred, but they, are, they have the wrong target. Uh, and it's our responsibility to educate people on what swastika is all about. And uh, we also, at, uh, at the same time, uh, condemn uh, uh, what Hitler did, uh, what the Nazis did, and what other hate groups do uh, using a symbol that is uh, compared with swastika, but it has nothing to do with swastika at all. And we'll, we'll uh, 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 I'm sure, have more discussion on that. Well, that's a good point. Thank you, Gopalai. So now, uh, Sureshji, for coming, building on that point, you know, there are a lot of sensitivities in um, other communities, especially the Jewish community and stuff like that, around this particular topic. And when we were having this discussion earlier, you know, when Kona had launched the petition and stuff, there were some concerns about how this is going to be portrayed, how we are looking. So that's why uh, I wanted to have your perspective on what, what are your thoughts on that particular point and how do we, as Hindus, how should we be viewing that this particular thing? Because I think many Hindus are not aware of some of these sensitivities, um, which need to be respected because of what the community has gone through. You're, you're on mute. Uh, thank you, Nikunj, and uh, namaste, everybody. Uh, I just, before I answer the question, it's a very valid question that Nikun just raised. Uh, before I answer that question, though, I just want to add to something that Gokulji just pointed out. Uh, there's a reason why the swastika is so old. And one of the more fascinating studies around the origin of the symbol has been astronomical. So if you look at, for example, if you look at the Big Dipper and its movement around the North Pole on the four, along the four equinoxes, you will find that the Big Dipper's movement around the North Pole actually constitutes a very nice representation of the swastika. So in, in, in research, it seems, to, it seems to indicate that, you know, as ancient people basically looked at the skies and the constellations to kind of guide them around the various seasons, the, the, the movement of the Big Dipper seems to have been a very important symbol for them. So, so the root of the symbol is actually astronomical and it, it comes from from the arrangement of the stars uh, but to, uh, to get back to your question i think the one thing we have to very clearly acknowledge is whatever name we choose to assign to that symbol whether we call it the hagen crows or whatever we want to call it the ss or whatever we want to call it the one thing i want to make sure we all acknowledge is it is extremely deeply traumatic to the jewish people six million jews were were killed, literally destroyed, their lives and their families and their livelihoods destroyed by a regime that publicly vowed to exterminate the entire Jewish population. So that symbol is intergenerationally traumatic to the Jewish community. So when you said, as you pointed out rightly at the beginning of this, uh, of this chat, 
we we have we should acknowledge and we do acknowledge very clearly that we stand shoulder to shoulder with the Jewish community on this. We acknowledge the fact that that symbol is one of deep hatred and deep trauma to the Jewish community. Uh, having said that, though, we also need to when we teach history, we have to teach history in the right context. And the big concern about this bill, as as uh, when we go to our students and we'll get a perspective from them on it. The big concern about this bill is when we try to right one wrong, it should not result in creating a new wrong. The fact that this symbol is deeply hateful is universally acknowledged and it should be universally acknowledged. The fact that hate crimes against Jewish people are on the rise even today as recent events in Pittsburgh show, we have to acknowledge that and as a society, we have to work to prevent that. But at the same time, that effort should not result in somehow demonizing a different culture that uses that same symbol historically in a completely different and positive way. So I think that is our big concern here. Our concern is there is no debate that this is a symbol of hate. There's no debate that we should teach this. The big question in our minds and as Hindus living in North America, we are particularly concerned about the fact that we don't want this to become an opportunity to transfer that hate to a different group, i.e. Hindus. We don't want the innocent use of the swastika, which is a, you know, a traditional religious symbol to be viewed as a official anti-Semitic action, which it is not, you know, and, and India Hindus in particular, and the Jewish community have a very long history. Hindus have always provided asylum to Jewish people fleeing persecution from other places. So we have a we have a very long historical relationship, the Jewish folks and Hindu folks. And the big concern here is we don't want this to become a divisive move in transferring the uh, the ire that people feel naturally towards a symbol to a different community. And and that's, I think, what we are focusing on here. Yeah. So, Sukran, I want to come to you now. Uh, you had actually done a very nice uh, video on this particular topic. And uh, from a Hindu youth perspective, I think you're, you're, I wanted to understand your, your, your you know, kind of understanding about the symbol itself, what it means to you, you know, how your family may be using it, uh, any concerns that you've seen when you have the symbol displayed in, in front of like your house or somewhere else mm -hmm. if there's something that you have observed. So I want to get your, get your uh, thoughts on this too. Yeah, so growing up as a Hindu in America is already very, very, um, what to say, it's much, more, it's much more of an experience in which you have to suppress your identity. Um, of course, we're always made fun of uh, for being Hindus. I'm sure this is very, very uh, much more of a national thing, uh, a problem that we have. We're always called as um, pagans, idol worshippers, um, people make fun of us for worshipping cows or whatnot. So that itself already gives us a bad experience with Hinduism and a part of our cultural and religious identity in itself. So the use of swastika is much more of a peaceful symbol for us. It really represents all of the divine qualities that we have. Of course, there's so much significance to it. Like um, it represents a whole bunch of things, uh, the four Vedas, um, the, the four directions, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of significance towards it. So in schools, the problem is uh, that we're not taught about the significance of it in Hinduism. We're taught about the significance of it, of being, uh, we're taught about the oppressive nature of it, which is very good. We should definitely learn about that. As Suresh Ji mentioned, we should learn about the oppressive history. But at the same time, we should understand how this symbol has been misinterpreted uh, for generations almost it's really come a long way, a really, really long way from its original intent and how Hindus use it. So I really believe that it's important for us to learn about the symbol um, and its uses throughout history. It's used by Hindus in a peaceful way, used by the Nazis in an oppressive way, and we should really understand uh, the differentiation there. Uh, growing, as, growing up as a Hindu itself, as a student, uh, we're often mocked, uh, always told that we believe in mythology and stuff like that. And the swastika itself, when learning about it in schools, uh, often whenever we had to learn about the Nazis and stuff, even when I was in like seventh grade, uh, personally, I, I, I said, okay, it's not, there's a differentiation between the swastika and the hook and cross. 
a swastika is actually a religious symbol for us Hindus. It's really uh, a big deal for us. And the teachers would often just deny it. They'd be like, no, um, it's an oppressive symbol. And um, that's really the most I can say. It really has come a long way from its original intent. And being a Hindu, we're already suppressing our identity so much. And this is another step away from our identity culturally. And I really think that we should learn about the symbol and its peaceful use. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And talking about identity and, and bullying and stuff like that, Arushi, I want to have a conversation with you on this. Uh, we have we have talked about this a lot in HSC about what, Hindu identity and being bullied and stuff like that. So yeah. I wanted to get your perspective. You know, if let's say if this legislation was passed, right? If yeah. they said, okay, you know what, it's going to be a symbol of hate. As a young Hindu in a high school who will potentially, you know, you're not obviously in New York, but this will naturally have national and international consequences. But imagine a law like this was passed in, in your school district, and you were taught you are uh, forced to learn that swastika is a symbol of hate without the proper context. How would you feel? And what would you, you know, think about as far as bullying is concerned? What would be your concerns? I feel like to put this in some context for viewers who may not know, it would be conflating the Haken Cruz, Hooked Cross with a uh, Hindu swastika would almost be like conflating the KKK burning cross with the Catholic cross. It would have disastrous consequences. Already, like Sukran said, in the curriculum, it's it's kind of ingrained in that curriculum to have misinformation about Hinduism, which is a minority religion in America. And already this leads to, as studies say, almost 50% of Hindu students feeling socially isolated or depressed in some way because they feel ashamed about their identity. So I really think that, of course, like you said, this is not really, I would say people hating Hindus, more like there's misinformation and people aren't aware. For example, that teacher probably does not know that the swastika was probably, was actually called the Hooked Cross. Yeah. So this new information is something that has never been presented before. So like Nikunj said, if this bill was passed without that proper context that should be there to kind of be a cultural bridge, but also make sure that it's clear to the Jewish community that we want that history of genocide and exodus to be acknowledged and we stand in support with them. If that were to happen, Hindus, Buddhists, Jains, who use the swastika, completely different from the Nazis' German Hakenkurs, because they never call it the swastika, Hindu students would in, would be seen, Buddhist, Jain students would be seen as, you know, hateful. We'd be seen as um, these people who have no respect for the dark history that has happened. We'd be seen as targets once again. Bullying rates are already up. For example, more than almost 15% of students have received race have been the target of racism from a teacher themselves. And that's only the reported ones. Imagine what would happen if, like I said before, conflating the burning cross with the Catholic cross or the Christian cross, you conflate the Haken cross with the swastika. Imagine what would happen to the experiences of young Hindu Americans, we're talking about 10 year olds, 11 year olds, 12 year olds, these are kids. If, there are, if they are exposed to this type of misinformation that directly leads to them being a target. For example, in seventh grade, one of my classmates asked me, are you a Nazi sympathizer? Because I had the swastika on the Hindu swastika, of course, on the side of a poster for the Hindus in Union class. We had to present a project. And one of my classmates who was actually um, also a person of color, um, asked me, are you a Nazi sympathizer? Like along those lines, because he was not aware of the difference between the Haken Cruz and the Hindu swastika. But that's just one small incident. Imagine what happened if this was nationally. So I really feel like this bill needs to be passed, but in an amended manner. If you replace it with Haken Cruz, differentiates the dharmic sign from the centuries and millennia of exodus and dark history that the Jews have unfortunately gone through, you can both combat anti-Semitism and like Suresh, you said, ensure that hate is not perpetuated against another minority group. That's very well put, very well put. Um, you know, we talk about history quite a bit and uh, we'll, you know, this is uh, it's a very touchy topic, no doubt about it. Um, Gokulbhai, I wanted to ask you actually about some of the historic significance of this um, you know, people know about World War II and stuff like that. But even I myself learned very recently about the history of the Hacking Cruise and how that really impacts what, what, how it was, how it came about. 
So if you can shed some light on that, how did Hitler actually come up, up with this, uh, this symbol? <clears throat> well, um, as you know, even in Europe and North America, swastika was uh, a symbol of fortune, good luck, auspiciousness, and all those good connotations uh, were not restricted to people who use it in Asia. It was universal. So till the advent of Hitler and those who were his colleagues, uh, this use of the cross as per him uh, uh, it was non-existent. So it's a recent phenomenon is we need to understand. Secondly, there was a attempt by many scholars in Germany and rest of Europe to prove that Europe and especially Germany is the cradle of civilization. So in their quest uh, to rationalize European invasion of India, which is one of the oldest civilizations and most considered as the most ancient civilization, to rationalize the invasion of India by different European colonial forces, there was a need to say that, oh, we Europeans, we are not the first to invade India. There were others before us. So this theory is called Aryan invasion theory and Aryan migration theory are very closely connected to Hitler's rise, his creation of this symbol and the Nazi ideology. So what Hitler did is combine socialism, nationalism, and racism. That's what Nazi ideology is all about. It is clearly an attempt to harm other people. And all that swastika represents is to make sure that, you know, we become noble, we become peaceful, we become harmonious, we uh, try to go inward. It is a symbol of dharma. And the, 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 the symbol that Nazis used to exterminate six million Jews and a million and a half Roma and many homosexuals and other groups of people alleging that they are of inferior race is definitely acts of adharma. So these two symbols represent the polar opposites. Hitler's symbol represents adharma and swastika represents dharma. And this needs to be understood not only by the West, but also Hindus, because many Hindus are not aware of what happened in Europe. They don't know what Hitler did. And unfortunately, uh, there needs to be uh, you know, more education, uh, uh, which there is not right now uh, in India. So uh, I think um, uh, at the time of uh, these theories floating in Europe, they did not imagine the adverse consequences to Jews, Romas, and other Christians. You know, millions of people died in World War II fighting Hitler. So uh, we are talking about a huge uh, human casualty, uh, you know, suffering, uh, death, destruction. So uh, as a Jew, as a Roma, you know, uh, they, they would feel uh, traumatized just looking at this uh, Hitler symbol, the Nazi symbol. And we must all acknowledge that fact and be aware of it. And at the same time, educate everyone that swastika has nothing to do with it. It's two, they are, uh, as I said, polar opposites, uh, both in design, in its uh, message and its historical usage. So the design, if you look 
and I I, uh, uh, I heard uh, Sukran discuss this. Uh, they are not. Uh, it's, it's not a misuse of swastika. I would not suggest that. Uh, it, it is compared to swastika, but the Hacking Cross is a symbol in itself. Its design is unique. It is it is twisted. It is black in color. So the, the design is fundamentally different. You don't see a green uh, Nazi symbol or orange grass uh, Nazi symbol. It's always black, and sometimes it is in uh, with a red background. So, uh, so in design, it's different. In mission or message, it has been different. A symbol of hate versus a symbol of peace, harmony. Uh, and uh, uh, fortune, and in historical usage, it has been different. <laughs> the, yeah. the, as is obvious, uh, uh, like Surajji said, uh, uh, throughout the ages, uh, you know, people have used this, uh, and there has been no negative or, or harmful impact of the swastika on anyone. Uh, right. and that's not the case with Hitler's uh, symbol. So Absolutely. these distinctions must be understood. And I, I would urge people who are watching this and who will watch this later, uh, that this Aryan invasion theory, Aryan migration theory, and this uh, obsession uh, to prove that civilization uh, was the consequence of a race uh, from Europe, uh, that has cost a lot of death and destruction. It is time to stop not just the Nazi symbol and their hateful ideology, but also these kind of uh, unproven uh, political theories uh, that no longer is uh, you know, valid uh, or uh, it's uh, useful to humanity. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree with that. Uh, maybe Suresh, you can enlighten us on a little bit on like the history on I know some people are asked the question that, you know, well, Hitler never used the word swastika. You know, he was always that, using a yeah. different word. I, I'm, I'm no German scholar, but people who have studied the Mein Kampf in the original have clearly pointed out that the, that the section in the Mein Kampf where the young Hitler who was in prison and writing this document as a future manifesto has clearly referred to the Hakenkreuz. He has never used the word swastika in the in the text, and as Gokulji was pointing out, the the Nazi symbol, as Hitler described it, had very specific dimensions to it. He described how broad the strokes had to be. He said that the color had to be black. It had to be on a white background. It had to be surrounded by red. So it's a, it's a very specific description in the Mein Kampf that describes the Hakenkreuz and how it has to be portrayed as a symbol of the National Socialists. Therefore, and, and, and the reason why the swastika became kind of associated with that was most of the translation, the early translations of Mein Kampf were done by Europeans. And Europeans have always, and, and that was a time in the early, you know, late 1930s, early 1940s during World War II, that was a time when the whole Aryan invasion theory was very prominent. And so it was it was kind of natural for people to make that association and say, oh, wait, Hitler must have gotten it from the swastika. When, and, and, they, and so they just translated it into English and used the word from Sanskrit, which I never, which I've never really understood. But they managed to pull a Sanskrit word to describe a German symbol, a, a symbol that was created by Hitler and described in very specific detail in Mein Kampf. So one of the things we have to remember is the word, the association of swastika with the Hakan Cruz itself is a European artifact. It wasn't like you know, people just decided, oh yeah, this looks like the swastika, so let's call it the swastika. It was, it was a, it was people trying to figure out why would Hitler pick that? And then they speculated on it. And then they said, oh, he must have picked it from the Aryan superiority theory. He must have picked it from Max Miller's writing about uh, uh, about the swastika and so on. So there is no real historical evidence that Hitler was ever aware of the term 
swastika even. Absolutely. Well, thank you for that. Uh, so like, let's talk about, there are a couple of books. If you look at Kona's website, there was uh, information, that, and I want to bring that up. There are two couple of books here. So one was Thomas Wilson, who was a curator with the Smithsonian Museum uh, back in 1894, who wrote a really good book about the origins of the symbol and stuff. And then there is a, uh, there are a couple other, uh, I would say, authors. There's a guy, Daniel Rancourt Laferrier, uh, who actually talked about the sign of the cross from Go Golgotha to genocide. Another book uh, that talks about what you just mentioned, that Hitler, he was at the Lambach Abbey in Austria, and he used to see this cross every single day. And it really inspired him and all that stuff. So he took that piece and said, you know, this particular one, I'm going to use it to create the flag that we know that's the symbol of evil nowadays. Yeah, and, and there was a very interesting, there was a very interesting tidbit, uh, you know, one of these fun facts things. During World War I, many soldiers in the U.S. Army had the swastika on their shoulder patches. I don't know if people knew that. I was stunned when I read about it. And it was it was clear to me that you know this symbol has clearly been misappropriated, mistranslated. It's it's unfortunate. I mean, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and say, oh my God, the people who did that in 1945 were all really evil people. No, but but I think I think to the point that Sukran and Arushi raised, in deference to the next generation, we owe it to the next generation to teach history, good and bad, especially the bad parts, so it never gets repeated. And we need to teach it right. It's up to us as adults. It's up to us as you know, makers of syllabuses and, and teaching methods and pedagogy and so on. It's up to us to recognize the fact that we owe it to our children to teach history right. And that's what this is about. This is not about opposing teaching uh, uh, you know, anti-Semitism or symbols of hate. This is about doing a right job. I mean, in the same context, for example, along with this, along with the swastika, the noose is also being taught as a hate symbol, which is very appropriate in my view, because especially, I mean, I live in Atlanta and the South has a history and, you know, we're not exactly proud of that history, but it does have a history of that kind of a symbol being used to intimidate and threaten and, and preach hate against the black community. So, yeah, we, we do need to teach these hateful symbols, but we need to teach them right. storm just entered and my power just went out briefly so to switch internet connections uh, so if you cannot see me or hear me there's a problem here but anyways coming back to the so let's talk about some of the other questions people are coming in with some questions I think we uh, we had a, a question so Arushi go ahead please I think I'm um, Sukran had something to add on yeah Sukran go ahead please I think you had something to say right earlier yeah yeah so earlier i was talking about like cultural identity right and how it's already um so skewed if that's the best word it's very uh it's very complicated for us hindus in america because we're told so many different things um and i really believe if this bill were to be passed and it really spread um swastika as a hate symbol instead of its true intention this would also create a flawed cultural identity for many people because one of the main things that always affects us is all these new things that are thrown at us. You worship cows, you worship stones, you worship uh, all these mythological characters. And these really um, psychologically affect us. It can really um, stray us away from our culture and our religion. And this is very true for many Hindus in America. And swastika itself is something that can affect that for the next generation. Because at home, um, we're not always taught about the historical context. We're not always taught about the significance. Um, so at school, when we rely on school and they're teaching us misinformation, it can also affect us very badly. Uh, and in fact, um, I don't know if it's just a messed up teacher, but the same teacher that I was talking about earlier, um, in fact, told to, when talking about Hinduism, she talked about how this Aryan invasion theory uh, and these essentially people who came from Europe actually created Hinduism and they merged their mythological beliefs with the Dravidians. Uh, and this also really created a problem for us. Uh, it just made us seem like, oh, so our religion is just a mixture of other religions. It really, I don't want to describe it, but it kind of feel kind of bad about ourselves and feel ashamed of our identity. Um, and also, uh, there's a whole debate about the Aryan invasion theory and et cetera. 
uh, the swastika itself is known to be an Aryan symbol um, because of what Nazi Germany spread. And this causes problems for us. Um, even though it, we do not directly say this causes a problem for me, psychologically in the back of our head, we're always going to be thinking about these things. And also it strays us away from our religion and our identity. And that's a huge problem uh, that a lot of American Hindus in this generation really face. Absolutely. And that the Aryan invasion theory itself is a topic and it's, that we will bring up. We have some very good scholars who can uh, talk about that impact and stuff like that. But needless to say, it's a very racist theory that is still taught, by the way. And you guys are in high school, so yeah. you probably know this, but you yes, know, starting from sixth grade and stuff, you'll still learn about this, right? So still outdated theories. Yeah. We're here, we're talking about, you know, moving around Black Lives Matter. We're talking about, you know, symbols of hatred and stuff like that. And here you have an entire curriculum that teaches people yeah. how to hate a certain religion. And because it's a foreign religion that is being brought, brought in by some light-skinned people who drove some dark-skinned people down south, you know, all this nonsense. And it's been continuously uh, challenged and, and debunked, but it still continues, right? So here we are talking about symbols of hate, and there's a huge, huge theory that is part of the curriculum that's teaching about who Hindus are as a people. So I absolutely agree with you on that. But, you know, let's talk about some, since we're running out of time, well, let's talk about some uh, future steps. Okay, like let's say that now we know the bill is not going to be passed, correct? So now how do we take, as a community, how do we make sure that we don't stop at this and declare victory per se? But it's important for us to edu go out and educate uh, in various schools, in the community and stuff like that. So I want to hear from Arushi. What do you think, as the president of Montgomery HSC, you know, let's say when schools do open up, how would you take this forward? I really think that um, definitely students need to be a little more establish dialogue with their teachers, especially English teachers and world history teachers, which is where these topics of race, ethnicity, and history will come up in these classes. And English often teachers. these teachers, um, it, these teachers are, I mean, of course, there's some like Sukran's teacher and um, kid, like kids who are in my class who unfortunately have a bias. Um, but most teachers are teachers who are trying to make the place inclusive for their students. They're trying to understand their students. They're trying to resolve many different cultural narratives and many different um, complicated experiences of all their students. So if you go to their if you go to your teacher and explain the difference between the Hindu, the Dharmic, swastika, and the Nazi Hakenkus, and you explain the racist history, the mistranslations, the colonial narratives, and how this has gotten warped, and you and you educate them about anti-Semitism and Hindu phobia. If our kids are armed with this information and are able to present it to their teachers confidently in a way that is respectful to the Jewish community as well, you can establish that dialogue within the classroom and make sure that people are educated. And we can also, of course, talk to school boards, school administrations, and make sure that amid, amid um, schools want to make their environments um, a little more safer for diverse people, people from diverse backgrounds. If this piece of misinformation is also cleared by the students and teacher, but students and parents, I think it will definitely bring about um, some positive changes to Hindus and hopefully kind of uh, tone down that bullying and that isolation that a lot of us feel. And I hope that Hindu Students Council and Kona can help be that change. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, so, so, Reza, you want to so, add something? So, yeah, I just wanted to add something to what Arushi just said. Uh, I, I think th those are all very valuable things that we should do. We should reach out to the teaching community, create a pedagogy, and so on and so forth. Uh, but I also don't want to lose sight of the broader uh, objective here. Uh, the fact that this bill has stalled in in the New York uh, in the New York State Assembly, I, I I think it's a partial victory. To me, real victory will be when the bill is actually passed with the right language i don't i don't want the bill to die i, I really yes. don't as a as a as a hindu and as a hindu american as a concerned citizen i think the bill has the right idea we should be teaching Correct. these symbols of hate to these children so they so, so the kind of nonsense that happened during 1945 never happens again right so i don't want the bill to die i just want right. it to be correct i i want it to tell history, teach history in a, in a proper way, in a positive way. So I think in terms of next steps, we should work, and my, and my, my goal would be from a, from a perspective of Kona and other Hindu organizations, is to form partnerships with Jewish organizations, with 
black organization with African American groups to come up and say, look guys, and, and include Native American groups and have an entire curriculum that talks about how symbols can come to represent hatred for entire populations. And, and I think that should be a curriculum. It should be a national curriculum. It should be taught in every single high school and middle school in America. And New York State can take the lead in this. But I think we should have a coalition of organizations which represent all kinds of indigenous cultures, Jewish cultures, with, with, you know, with the historical uh, use of the symbol and come up with the proper way to teach it. And so we can kind of influence the, the legislature in a positive way. So I, I personally don't want to declare victory by saying, oh, great, we stopped it. No, I actually want it to go forward, but in the right way. That's right. And I, I fully agree with you. Uh, I would say in terms of closing remarks, uh, number one is that we fully support the intention of the bill. I think the bill is on the, on the right track, as sure as you said. We don't want the bill itself to die because teaching about hatred, teaching about racism, teaching about intolerance is extremely important. However, it needs to be contextualized with input and partnerships from various communities, including the Jewish American community, uh, the Hindu, Buddhist, Jain, Native Americans, African American community. Everybody needs to come to the, to, the, to the table and really come up with ways to teach these symbols in the proper context with the cultural sensitivity across the board, whether and also recognizing the trauma that the Jewish American community or the Jewish community in general has faced uh, along with the African American community. I think that's going to be very important for us. So we need to be culturally sensitive to that. Uh, but we have a lot of work to do as Hindus. I think this was a very good discussion for us to start this conversation. This is not the end of the conversation. We haven't declared any victory per se. I think we want to continue to work this on this thing. Let's take this opportunity as a Hindu organization, as Hindus in general, as multiple organizations here to go out and educate people about what swastika is for us. Uh, also recognizing the trauma that the misuse of symbols creates uh, and creating partnerships with other community organizations. And that's the best way we can come together for a pluralistic America, a America that respects uh, mutual respect. Uh, it's also about accepting different opinions at the same time. And that's what's going to lead to community harmony and to world harmony. So I want to thank everyone for joining today. Um, and we'll continue this conversation. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you, Namaste. 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 Thank you everybody. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You.